How's Bitcoin Week going? Is it fine? Did you like our country? Yeah! You loved it, right? Well, let me say some hellos. I have to say this. That's in protocol. So here's the vice president over there. Hello, vice president. Oh, over there. Yeah. He's the vice president of the country in the party. The president of the assembly is also here. Where is he? Woo! Ernesto? Over there. Yeah, we have some diputados over there, ministers, secretaries. Yeah, we have the participants and speakers of La BitConf. Where are you guys? Great event. How about the participants, organizers, and speakers of Adopting Bitcoin? Where are you? Our friends of Bitcoin Beach. El Sonte, where everything started. And every, where are the Bitcoiners? That's it. Then the miners, <laughs> Russians, <laughs> Germans, <Yeah>. French. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm joking. Okay, so let's see, let's see. Uh, you remember in June 6, I sent a video to Bitcoin conference in Miami, and we announced that El Salvador was making Bitcoin legal tender. That was June 6. Then in June 9th, the deputados over here, they approved the Bitcoin law in the assembly. And we listened to it. A lot of us, 22,000 of us, we listened to it in Bitcoin spaces. And we, and we listened to the vote live. And, you know, after that, we had some attacks of the opposition. Believe it or not, we have an opposition. It's very small, but we do have one. And they started, you know, complaining about Bitcoin and they started mis with the misinformation to the people telling them Bitcoin was bad and, you know, you, you shouldn't use that currency because, you know, it's invisible. You cannot see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They are all full of bullshit. But, you know, they're still, they're allowed to be full of bullshit. So they started rallying some people, you know, 1% of the population is 70,000 people. So it's a lot of people. They can rally 1%, but they can still rally like, you know, 0.1%. And they started, they were, we had some protests. You see those? They even burned an ATM. Full ATM full of, you know, USD, so fine. <laughs> the Bitcoin was saved with the cloud. They just burned 30,000 US dollars. They couldn't burn the Bitcoin because it was invisible, right? So they burned the ATM and everything. But do you see something? How many events did we have this week? Like 40? Like 40 events, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you see one protester? No. They can rally anybody anymore. No, I don't know. <laughs> because I don't know the exact number, but I would think around 5 million Salvadorans have been orange pills have been orange pilled right now. <laughs> How do I know the number? I don't know the exact number, but I know 3.8 people use our, our wallet. I know Bitcoin Beach has a lot of users. Yeah. I know the guys from Strike, they have a lot of users too. They was the number one app in El Salvador for like, like three months. And a lot of people use other wallets, Coinbase and you know, a lot of wallets. And yeah, Moon Wallet. Yeah, yeah yours, BitRefill, BitRefill, sorry, BitRefill. Yeah, not okay, bite. So, uh, I don't know the exact number, but if you add up 30,000 Salvadorans that would be Bitcoiners before the law, so the number could be way over 4 million. I don't know if it's 5 million, but you could say 5 million for the underage of almost all the population. So it's very hard for them to find protesters. But, you know, so they couldn't do one in the whole Bitcoin week. That's good, right? But they're free to do it. That's good also, right? Yeah. Free country. They can protest. They can, you know, burn ADMs. Fine. They're just, you know, they have insurance. Yeah, you can burn all, all of them. Don't worry. 
And, well, so we, it took us like June, July, August, September. It took us like four months to orange build everybody. So that's fast, right? That's really fast. Yeah, exactly. The Savior. No. Beautiful Salvador. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and you know, we demonstrated that Bitcoin could do a lot of good things. You know, in this conference, in, in, in the Bitcoin, the, the Bitcoin, Latin American Bitcoin conference, they sold some surfboards, yeah. And they sold them $11,000, $7,000, and all that money was going to the children's hospital. Yeah, and you know there were some other guys from Liverland, they, they donated, those guys, they are over there, they donated one Bitcoin, right? They donated one full Bitcoin for the children's hospital too. Yeah, that's right. And we're getting a lot of donations, we're building 20 Bitcoin schools, which will be full of, you know, technology and everything, but also the economical education of the future. How did money evolve and all of that things. So, but also, do you saw the, the, the pet hospital we're building? Yeah. So we're building a pet hospital with, you know, our trust fund is made up of Bitcoin and dollars. So since the Bitcoin part is now worth more, so the US dollar part, we can spend something of it and build that. And we, know, we announced it, we announced it like in first days of October, we start building it in the last days of October, and now we're doing th uh, thir the third floor. And I asked, why are you finishing that thing? I said, 60 days, Mr. President. I said, yeah, that's fast. El Salvador is fast. So we built, which country in the world will announce one thing, one day, start construction, four weeks later, and finish it 60 days later. El Salvador, that's right. So, you know, I was thinking, we're having this great event with all these great people, and I was thinking, we should do a great announcement, right? But we already have Bitcoin as legal tender, so what could it be? Uh -huh. Has to be something as good as that, at least. So I was thinking, what do we do? Do we bring Satoshi here? <laughs> what do we do, right? It's a little hard. So I thought, you know, when, when Alexander the Great was conquering the world, uh, they established this Alexandrias. And the whole point of the Alexandrias, they were very small pieces of land, if you would think cities at that time. But they established 20 Alexandrias all over the empire and the, the idea was these Alexanders not to cover the territory, which was immense, and the Alexanders were actually very small, but the idea behind it was to these Alexanders be the, the beacons of hope for the rest of the world, that all of the world could be like that. Of course, Alexander the Great died, and the emperor divided, and you know, you know the rest of the story, but that was the idea. So I thought, you know, if you want Bitcoin to spread all over the world, we should build some Alexandrias, right? So I thought, well, we should build the first Alexandra here in El Salvador. So we were thinking of building, no, not that, take that off. <laughs> That's Chivo Pets. So we were thinking of building Bitcoin City. Woo! Over there. There you have El Salvador, you have, the, you have the geothermal plant. Some people saw that, you have that in Berlin and Zulutan. And right next to, well, close to there, here you have the power plant. And close to there, you have the Gulf, Gulf of the Fonseca, the Fonseca Gulf. So why don't we build the city over there in the Fonseca Gulf? So actually, what I was going to present to you is the building of, now feel the beat, yeah. <laughs> Bitcoin City. Yeah. 
It's not just an idea, but it would actually, yeah, it was not just an idea, but it would actually be a legal municipality wow. with mayor and everything. Probably run for mayor of Bitcoin City in the future. So, what is Bitcoin City going to include? Well, it's going to be right there in the Fonseca Gulf. And it's going to include everything, residential areas, commercial areas, services, museums, entertainment, bars, restaurants, airport, port, rail, everything devoted to Bitcoin. And can you put up the presentation of the Bitcoin City, please? Yeah, not the logo. <laughs> Yeah, if you can see. Hey, the presentation, guys. <laughs> oh, Colombians. So there you go. Go back. Don't show that, my guys. <laughs> Go to the beginning, al principio. <laughs> yeah, what's that? That's mine? Oh, it's yours. Yeah, it's from Argentina. Oh, it's mine. Thank you, beautiful. Okay, so that's the city. So that's Bitcoin City, will be a circle that will encoast a new volcano. It's not a new volcano, but a new volcano, it's, been, it's not the same volcano that's powering the mine. It's another one. So at the beginning, we will power the city with the old volcano and the old, old uh, power plant, but then we will build a new one right next to the city. And the volcano will power the whole city and will also power the mining. So we will have a real volcano here. And the full city. Now, please, roll it. So the city is going to be totally circle, except for the, the place of the volcano. And in the middle, you will have a huge plaza, which is, would be from the air, you will look at it as a Bitcoin sign. So you have everything. Regulations, new economic policies, digital zones. The strategic location, the Fonseca Gulf is shared by Honduras, Nicaragua, and El Salvador. No, the Fonseca Gulf, it's you know, three countries. So this will be in an international area. And the government will provide the land and the infrastructure the public infrastructure, the economic areas will attract investors that will contribute to the development and construction of the city. And of course, Bitcoin City is committed to free and equal access to everything. So, roll it. There, we'll have digital and tech educations. And the social polycentric urban configuration, which has a small dent for the volcano there. Nice feature in the city. We have digital and physical arts and culture, equality and free accessibility to the digital system, geothermal energy that will power the entire city and the Bitcoin mining. And of course, will facilitate business and technolo technology investment and of course, sustainable and efficient public transportation. Now, yeah, yeah, I had the control, sorry. <laughs> now, of course, that's the division. I will not bore you with those things, but you have social amenities, the residential, the green areas. I mean, it will be huge and technological, but also huge and sustainable and green. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah. And we're going to have industrial and office space, and also everything is going to be a digital environment. Everything has been taken into consideration, recreation, electricity, water treatment, and waste management, etc. Airport port. The airport will be uh, 10 miles away and the port will be five miles away. Five kilometers away, which is like three miles. 
you know, how it's, you know, the split of everything that we, that we had, the volcano, well, you know, how it works, it powers the hot water steam, that powers the turbine, that powers an energy generator, and then we have electricity, crypto mining, warehousing, tourism, entertainment, and culture and sports. Everything clean and coming from the volcano. Now, of course, that sounds nice and everything, but you know, there would be you know, the city with time, you know, and private entrepreneurship and investment, of course. Who would, you know, if I had a company, a digital company, why wouldn't I want to be there, right? It's like logical for me and everybody that you have to be there, you know, in the Alexandria, right? Everybody wants an office space over there. So office, office space builders build something because you will have a lot of clients looking for office space. And apartment builders build apartments because you have a lot of people looking for an apartment. I want an apartment over there. And that plaza would be beautiful, made up of stone, colored stone. So you have orange color stone and gray. So you have that beautiful thing made up of stone so it will last for thousands of years. Woo! Not the buildings, but the, the plaza itself will last for thousands of years. So we're all, when we're all gone, they will, they will see that the plaza is still there, probably using it. Yes, that's from the air. Little, you know, they, a little sepia here. <laughs> and that's Bitcoin City. But I'm not done. Bitcoin, people will say, well, you know, it looks fine, it's techy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine in New York or, you know, Houston or whatever. Miami. And nice cities, though. No, you're not real, exactly. Yeah, you want to live in, exactly, you're moving here. Look at the weather. I mean, we're in winter. Yeah, that's winter. That's winter for you guys. And, well, not winter, but, you know, almost in winter. And, but in Bitcoin City, of course, it's in El Salvador, so Bitcoin is legal tender, that's nice. But not enough, probably. Probably nothing. <laughs> or not. But we'll have zero income tax. <laughs> yeah. Zero percent forever. Zero capital gains tax. That's all! So you, you know, invest here, make all the money you want. You know. We're fine. Exactly, trade whatever you want. Zero property tax. I mean, if you're, if you're making a huge building, you don't want to pay property tax for that. So you don't pay anything. Zero payroll tax. We, we want you to hire people, not to pay taxes to, for hiring people. Zero municipal taxes. Now you say, okay, so who's gonna pick up the trash? I'm gonna go into that. And zero CO2 emissions. Because this is a fully, fully ecological city that's work, that works and it's energized by a volcano. That it's just right in the side of the city. So that's Bitcoin City, everybody. So you know that you will say, well, you know, that sounds nice, but who's going to pick up the trash? So the only tax that you're going to have in Bitcoin City is the value added tax, which, you know, normal value added tax, 10%, which you would pay for, you know, if you buy a Coke, you pay 10%, like, you know. And that value added tax will be used, half of it, to pay the bonds that we're gonna issue to build up the city, so it's gonna pay for itself. And the other half will be transferred to the municipality, so they clean up the trash, they keep the parks nice, and they keep the city all neat and clean. So that would be the only tax, the value-added tax, 10% value-added tax. And that tax will be used to pay for the city and its, and its public infrastructure and to pay for the maintenance of the city. So the mayor will have that income, so you know, he keeps the city clean and, tight and tidy. When can you live there? Well, we are start, we'll start uh, the funding in 20, 60 days. 
after after funding no no we'll start funding in 2022 so the the, the bonds will be available in 2022 and i want to you know, we, so we, I'm, think, I'm thinking the public infrastructure will be around 10, no, sorry, around five, 300, 300,000 bitcoins. Yeah, that will be the, the public infrastructure and the private investment that's you know, unlimited. Now, we were talking about these bonds fully, you know, in the Bitcoin ecosystem and not the normal bond that we would issue in, you know, the in New York Stock Exchange. So we talked with my friend Samson. Where is he? Samson. From Blockstream. Yeah, come on. Yeah, Samson, Samson here, here. So we were talking about building a park before, but that, that idea is gone. We're not building the, the park. I thought we are building the park. No, no, we're not. Sorry, sorry. You know, maybe. Maybe. So we're gonna start with a small issuance to test the waters. So I'm gonna give two minutes to my friend Samson right here so he can explain you what we're gonna do with, right now, before issuing the city bonds. So please. Where is it? Yeah, presentation. It's okay, I can just start. Yeah, you start. So this is a very, historic moment. We're going to be issuing Bitcoin bonds. Do you guys like Bitcoin bonds? And these bonds are amazing. It's going, the first one is going to be a, a billion dollar bond. And what makes it a Bitcoin bond is because it's backed by Bitcoin. So half of the billion dollars will go into buying Bitcoin. So the president is going to market by $500 million of Bitcoin. That also, yeah. we're gonna buy $500 million in Bitcoin. We'll see. The other half will go towards infrastructure, uh, specifically building energy infrastructure and Bitcoin mining. So this is why it's going to be called the Volcano Bond. And this is going to be a series. So this first bond is called the EBB1 or El Salvador Bitcoin Bond 1. But there will be more. Um, the coupon is 4.5%, but there's also a special Bitcoin dividend. So of that 500 million that the president buys, after a five-year lockup, they will start selling some of that Bitcoin to give an additional coupon, an additional coupon to all the investors in the bond. Now, if you uh, think Bitcoin is going to go up, and we've modeled it out, so this is something we've been working on for months, actually. Um, conservatively, I this would say... This is That's important. 35% year over year is conservative. But at the end of the 10 years, or in the 10th year of the bond, your APY will be 146%. So the coupon is 6.5% for the first five years, and then it starts getting a Bitcoin boost. And I think this product is going to be incredibly attractive, not only to Bitcoin hodlers, investors, people that have stable coins, but just normal people as well, like even from the traditional financial industry or bankers, because there's no instrument like this on the market. This bond will be issued on the liquid network, a Bitcoin sidechain. And to make that happen, there needs to be a few things that are done. So first of all, the government is working on a securities law. So law for digital securities, modern digital securities laws. And they will be issuing the first license to operate a securities exchange here in El Salvador to Bitfinex, to Paulo and his excellent team. So this is going to make El Salvador the financial center of the world. It's the Singapore of Latin America. And if the U.S. continues declining, all of North and South America. But this is a big first step. And you know, with Bitfinex, they have a lot of whales, so I don't see a problem filling a billion dollar bond. Um, there's a five year lockup on the bond, so that's half a billion dollars of Bitcoin taken off the market for five years. Cool. Now, if you do nine more bonds, that's 10 bonds. That's five billion in Bitcoin taken off the market for 10 years. And if you get 10 more countries to do these bonds, that's half of Bitcoin's market cap right there. 
Yeah. So the game theory on this, on these Bitcoin bonds, is just insane. The first country to do it, which will be El Salvador, will have a massive advantage. If Bitcoin at the five-year mark reaches $1 million, which I think it will, they will sell Bitcoin in two quarters and recoup that $500 million. In three and a half quarters, they can get enough money to pay back the entire bond. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. So Not the, financial, though. the first countries that do this will have a massive advantage. This is the beginning of uh, nation state Bitcoin FOMO. Do you guys like that? Yeah. So if you guys want to invest in El Salvador, this is the easiest way to do it. It would be tied to citizenship too. So if you're investing in these bonds, it's or anything uh, else. permanent residence, fast tracking to citizenship. So you might have thought when the Bitcoin law came out, how can I do it? How do I start? This makes it super easy. Buy the bond and the rest takes care of itself. So I'm running short on time. So I'll just repeat Jack Mowler's. We are here to change the world. We are here in El Salvador to change the world. And we are ready to die on this hill. All of us are ready to die on this hill. Bitcoin is going to save the world and it starts here in El Salvador. No bras? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, the wind. I'm the wind done. there. Now, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, you're from Colombia? Do you want to show the shirt? Free advertising here. Now. Yeah. Send me some sets. Now. You know, like Samson said, Bitcoin is going to change the world. It has already changed it, but it was going to change even more. And you know what? A lot of people they don't know the history of money. I want to tell you that I won't tell you the history of money, don't worry. But you know, this is normal evolution. So it's just not a good, a good, a cool, a nice idea. It's the evolution of humankind. So we're going there. And you can't stop evolution. No, you just can't. It just happens. So it doesn't matter if we build Bitcoin City or not for the evolution of Bitcoin or if we issue some bonds or if we do this event. It will evolve regardless because that's the way it is. But it's nicer if we are part of it. So it's nicer if we push it a little. It's nicer if we make a legal tender. It's nicer if we make some countries home FOMO. It's nicer if we build a city or 10 cities or 20 cities like the Alexandrias. So, you know, it's nicer. It doesn't have to be that way, but I think it's going to be better if it is that way. So at the end, it's, you know, for us others, it would be nice to be the financial center of the world. Yeah, it sounds cool for us. So it doesn't matter probably for Bitcoin, but yes, it matters for us. And I think we can, we can make it even better. And we can push the future even forward. So, for some reason, if you believe in God, if you don't believe in God, nature, the universe, for some reason we're all here right now. In Misata Beach, in El Salvador, having fun, watching at this pro those, at these projects, looking into the future, it's nice to be part of it, isn't it? Yeah! So, you know, let's all be part of it. And let's all push the future even forward. Thank you, guys. Have fun! We love you, everybody.